In this video, we are going to see how to reset a D2L course. Why might you want to do that? Well, perhaps you were building a course and made such a serious mistake that you just want to start over. I did that once when I imported the wrong course. Or perhaps you just want to reuse a course for something else. It is important to realize that this cannot be undone. So, make absolutely sure you want to reset the course before you start. A note first. This is a live, active course that I will be resetting. As such, it contains a small amount of student data. To comply with FERPA, the student information will be blurred on the screen. Along those same lines, while I'll reset most of the course, I do plan to leave one news item in place. D2L does not have any option to reset a course. That means you have two approaches you can use. The first is to ask your IT department to create a new course for you. You then can just abandon the existing course and use the new one. When this approach is not doable, then you have to reset the course piece by piece. That is what I will be demonstrating here. Let's get started. First, I go to the content area by clicking on the content at the top. It is not clear how to delete the contents from the screen. To do so, I click on the drop down arrow beside the table of contents symbol. From there, I click on delete all modules. From the dialog box that appears, I select permanently delete all modules, topics, and all associated files and activities. This takes a long time to run and I just have to wait. Next, I click on Discussion at the top. From there, I click on the drop-down arrow beside the More Action and select Delete. From there, I click on Select All. Next, I click on Delete. It deletes all the discussion without any further confirmation. Next, I click on Dropbox. From there, I click on the arrow beside More Actions and select Delete. This course has no discussion forms, but if it did, I would continue just as I did for discussions. Next, I click on Quizzes. This course has no quizzes either. If it did, I would click on the box at the top to select them all. I would then use the drop down arrow beside the More Action and select Delete to delete all quizzes. Next, I click on Course Home. From here, I select the drop down arrow beside News. I only have one news item and I want to keep it, so I will not actually click on Delete. But if I were to delete them, I would click on the square to top to select all items and then would click on the delete by the trash can. By default, D2L only shows 20 news items. If you have more than that, you would need to delete them in batches of 20. Next, I click on class list and remember, I will be blurring out student information. Click on any students you wish to unenroll and click on the unenroll button at the bottom. If this is a template course, you can skip this step as it will not have any students. However, be very, very sure not to unenroll yourself. If you do, you will lose all access to the course. It asks me to confirm, so I click on Yes. Next, I click on Edit Course. I then click on Manage Files. I then click on the box to select all. I click on the trash can. I confirm with Yes. All the files were deleted the first time for me with this course. I've had this operation stall in the middle and not delete everything. In some cases, it took me three attempts to get everything deleted. A few times, D2L even kicked me out of the course, so I had to log back in. In all cases, I got all the files deleted in no more than three attempts. I will now click on Course Home and go back to the Course Home. That's it. You're done. Your course has been completely reset. If you found this tutorial useful, I have two MOOCs on Udemy.com that may interest you. The first is called Creating Exciting Videos Using PowerPoint Slides. It will show you how to take your classroom PowerPoint slides and turn them into videos with narration that you can use for your online courses. If you teach operations management or a related course, then your students will definitely be interested in my Working Operations Management Problems course. It has over eight hours of tutorials giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to work every type of problem that is typically covered in operations management. 